Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow FX once again, and in this video, I'm going to go over our Photoshop Pro Pack for Loop Deck devices. I'm going to start off just introducing you a little bit to the new version 5.0. Uh, loop deck software and then I'm going to give you a navigation on how this pack is built all the different features that it has and then closer towards the end we'll get into how you can customize the profile included in the pack to suit your own needs. Now I'm on a Mac system and you can follow along the Windows operating system is going to function the same way in addition I've got a loop deck CT device hooked up at the moment I'll be featuring the pack on that device. And most of the functions are the same on the Lie device as they are on the CT, except for, of course, you don't get the shuttle wheel or the square buttons. Other than that, everything else is identical and you can follow along. So if you haven't already, check out our installation video, link in the description below, if you haven't yet installed the pack. If you have and you're loaded up, let's start exploring. So, of course, under the profile, you're going to want to scroll down to the profile itself, and we have it listed here, Sideshow Effects, Photoshop Sideshow Effects. If you click on the menu button here, you'll see that Loop Deck provides a default Photoshop profile already. But if you went through our installation process, you will have our Photoshop Sideshow Effects version here. Make sure that's the active one. Close, and then we can access it. Scroll down and just click on it, and that will make it active also in the profile a dynamic mode if you have the dynamic mode on it will automatically switch to this profile when you switch to Photoshop very handy so here's our main page and you can see in our workspace dialog box here if we click on this we can see the workspaces that we've got built into this profile now there's 11 of them currently there's a main and then there's 10 of these main menus that you can access. This whole one is the 11th, which is your main workspace. So we can navigate to the different workspaces just by clicking on each one of these here. Or, as you can see in our UI here, we have numbers along the bottom here that allow us to access additional pages. So if a workspace has more than one page, as this one does, you can jump right to a page by clicking on the number. In addition, you have the menu that lists the pages in this particular workspace for the touch screen. The dial strips, which are these left and right and are what the dials will control, has its own navigation here along the side. Same sort of function. The wheel is different. It doesn't have that jump menu, but clicking on it reveals the jump menu in this dialog. You can jump to the different pages of the wheel commands. Now in addition, we have programmed the round buttons here to allow you to jump to the different workspaces. And if you mouse over, you can see what the workspaces are. They reflect the same workspaces as we have in our main layout, tools, adjustments, image, etc. It's just a quick way to jump to a particular workspace. So for example, if you're in our image workspace and you want to jump over to tools, you don't have to jump over to main and then go into tools. You can just click on the tools shortcut in the round button here. And you can jump around to the different workspaces this way. And I can demonstrate that on our actual device. You can see we can jump to different workspaces with the round buttons. Now let's explore the different pages and what they offer. So we're on the main page right now. It allows us to get to the 10 different main menu items that we've got. Now over on the right hand side, these are where our actions are located. And you can see currently this action menu is has been selected. And these are the ones that come shipped with the Loop Deck device software. And so these are the actions and rotation adjustments that Loop Deck itself has built in. Now, the only issue with these, of course, is there's not an awful lot of them, and in addition, they don't have icons associated with them. So, generally speaking, you're going to not use this action setting at all. 
Instead, you're going to go over here to the far right and click on Custom, because this is where Sideshow Effects has all of its effects built. These are all the ones that we have created, and they're organized alphabetically in a number of different categories. And we'll get into more detail about this, but just as a quick overview, you can see that there are multiple folders here that are, have repeated names. For example, there's two files here, but one is listed as mapped and one is listed as unmapped. Just quickly to show you the difference, if we scroll this down, these are all the mapped functions that Sideshow FX has built. And the difference between a mapped function and an unmapped function, a mapped function, if I click on it, it will open up its parameters. So it shows me the icon that is that has been attached to it, the name of the action itself, and the shortcut that has been applied to it. If I go to file unmapped and choose a function, you can see it, even though it's unmapped, it has an icon attached to it as well, its name, but the shortcut is just listed as a space, which is a placeholder, allowing you to click on this and add in your own shortcut. We'll get to that a little bit later, but that is just the main difference between mapped and unmapped. There's 593 fully mapped commands that we built in here and 613 unmapped ones. The unmapped has icons attached to it. You just need to add in your own shortcut. So generally speaking, this, if you're going to do any modifications and customization, you're going to access it through the custom menu here. And one final note on this section, this is currently listing all actions, whether they're press actions or rotation adjustments. And you can filter it by just clicking this button here and that will filter to show only press actions, click it off and click it for to show only rotation adjustments that we've built in. Okay, so that's the overview of the software, but let's actually see it in action. So let's launch Photoshop. So once we launch Photoshop and because we have dynamic mode on, our device automatically loads up our Sideshow FX profile. Now one thing you should be aware of Currently, I'm not sure if it's a bug or not, but we find that if you launch Photoshop and start working with the device, some actions don't work as expected. But all you need to do is go to your plugins folder, go to loop deck, loop deck info, and just basically open that and close it. And that triggers everything to work properly for the loop deck device. Once again, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but if it's not working for you, Give that a try, that should, should resolve the issue. So here we are with the uh, main menu on the device and we can click on any one of these workspaces to hop to that workspace. So let's click over to tools and we have a number of different tools available to us. So clicking on any of these will of course make that tool active in the interface. In this particular workspace, we have three pages of touch commands and we can get to different pages by simply doing a swipe across the screen, either left or right, and that accesses additional pages. There's the third page. If we swipe once more, it'll take us back to the first page. Same thing, you can swipe to, uh, towards the right, and that's page three, page two, and page one. All the workspaces work in this way if they have multiple touch pages. Now the dial strips, you can see that we've got them mapped. Uh, currently on this workspace, we're looking at brush adjustments. So let's open up a brush here. We'll open up a brush palette here. I'll select a color. The dial on the top left here will adjust our size. As you can see, it's responding. The next one down will adjust our hardness and then our opacity. And you can see the opacity move up and down at the top of the screen there. We have our roundness, the angle of our brush. And if you are using a, uh, a pen tablet, this will change the pressure. Now, because we're on a CT device, we have the advantage of having the shuttle wheel. And the way the shuttle wheel works, uh, you can see we have four uh, brush adjustment commands on the shuttle wheel. But you see the thin blue line above the one at the top. 
that indicates that that is the live tool at the moment. So when I rotate the shuttle, that's the command that's going to take place. Currently, that is the size of our brush. So rotating this will increase and decrease the size of our brush. Change the angle here, the hardness, and the opacity up and down. Now back to the dial strips. Much in the same way that we can swipe left and right on the touchpad to get to different pages, there are more pages in the tools workspace that we can access, and we, we access those by swiping up or down on the dial strip itself. So swiping up, and now we are presented with six new tools that we can use. I'll close the brush palette here. First tool here is our horizontal offset. And this is our vertical offset. And this one down here will change our, our layer scale. On the top right, we can stretch our layer horizontally, stretch vertically, and we can rotate our layer. I'm just going to do a quick revert on this. Over to the shuttle wheel again. It also has a swipe function. We can swipe left or right to get to a new page. So now we have the same sort of controls that are available to us. Currently, you can see that layer rotation is selected. So we can rotate the layer, stretch the layer, etc. Same functions are available there. Back to the dial strip, if we swipe up one more time, we have another page of a few more functions available to us. The top dial will move up or down selecting different layers that are available in our, in our project. Let me just add a few layers here and you'll see this in action. You see it jumps to different layers. We can also zoom a layer, change the layer's opacity, and change the layer's fill. Down to the shuttle wheel once again. Gives us access to four more tools. Same sort of tools, we can see our layer navigation, opacity fill, and the bottom one allows us to cycle through the blend modes. Swiping up once more on the dial page brings us back to the first page of the dials. Same thing with the shuttle wheel. So that's the tools workspace. I'm gonna revert this. Now we can go back to the main page by clicking on the main button there, or as mentioned earlier, we have mapped the round buttons to all the different workspaces. So we can just jump over to the main workspace by pressing the first round button. Now let's hop over to the next workspace that we've got, which is adjustments. And if we take a look at the Loop Deck software, we can see at a glance that we have two touch pages and we have six dial pages. And if we click on the shuttle wheel, we can see we have six shuttle wheel pages. So let's explore these. So we have several different adjustments that we can make with this page. We can open up the curves dialog, and open up selective color, etc. You can explore all these and we can swipe to the left to get to our second page of adjustments. Allow us to do different things all together. Swipe back to the main for us. Now the dial strips, as we showed you, there are six dial strip pages, and we'll quickly go through the commands on this one. So the first dial here is our brightness. So we adjust the brightness, adjust the contrast, and open up the, uh, the histogram here, be able to see it a little easier. And the third one down is our hue adjustment. At the top right here, lightness adjustment. Then we have vibrance control and our saturation. Let me drop the saturation right in. I'm going to revert my image. Let's swipe up to get to our next page. And here we're presented with some color balance controls. So here we can adjust our cyan reds in our highlights, our magenta green in the highlights, and our yellow blues in the highlights. Over on the other side, we have cyan red in the mids, magenta green in the mids, and yellow blue in the mids. 
swiping up once more, we can adjust our shadow cyan red, our shadow magenta green, and our shadow yellow blue. On the other side of the strip, we have exposure controls. So we can adjust the midpoint of our exposure, our exposure offset, and our exposure value. Once again, I'm going to revert my image. Let's swipe up once more. Now we have channel mixer controls available to us. The first of which is our red red channel mixer. So increases or decreases of red in our red channel. Red green will include will increase the amount of red in our green channel and red blue increases the amount of red in our blue channel. On the opposite side, we have control over the green red, green green, and green blue. Swipe once more, and we have access to our blue red, blue green, and blue blue. And the right side allows us to control the red contrast, green contrast, and blue contrast. So swipe up once more. And we have some level controls here. In particular, we have our level input, and our level output, and our level midpoint, our gamma. And then finally, we have highlights and shadow control. And then swiping once more takes us back to the first page of our dial page. Now we have the same functions that are available to us that you just saw on the dial page on the shuttle wheel. So if you choose to use the shuttle wheel instead of the dials, they're available to you down here. So currently brightness is selected. So moving the shuttle wheel, we can adjust our saturation, adjust our contrast, adjust our hue. Swipe to get to the next set. We have levels available to us. So currently we have the input selected. Go to the midpoint and go to the output. Swipe once more. Our exposure controls. Swipe. We have some channel mixer controls, which is our red, 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 green, red, blue, and our red contrast. Same thing for the green channel and the blue channel. Swiping once more takes us back to the first page of the shuttle wheel. And that's it for the adjustments section. Now we can hop over to our main page again. Next workspace we can look at is image. And here we have a number of different shortcut commands that we can access. We can flip our canvas. And we have two pages here. So here's a second page of touch controls. We can show our rulers. Show the grid, and you can explore those. Swiping once more takes us to the first page. Now we have our same layer controls that we saw earlier. They're mapped onto this workspace, as they are on the shuttle wheel as well. Second page of the shuttle wheel, however, gives us a few different commands that we haven't seen yet. Zoom our image to 100%, fit our image to our existing window, or as you can see with our double lines showing us that the center control is active, we can zoom our layer. Let's hop back to main. The next workspace we can look at is layer. Now these are a bunch of layer shortcuts that we can take advantage of and you can explore these at your leisure. And the dial strips are some of the commands that we've seen before except we do have a blend mode on the dial strip over here so we can adjust to our blend mode. We have a rotate canvas here that we haven't seen yet. So it rotates the canvas rather than rotating the layer itself. And we also can zoom our layer with this dial. Now there are three pages of dial strips on this workspace. So let's scroll up. Same layer functions we've seen before. Scroll up one more time and we can see we have some text controls. So let's add in some text and we'll take a look at those. So here I have a piece of text. Our first dial will change the font in our currently loaded font system. Next dial down will change 
the size of our text. And if I make this two lines here, and adjust the bottom one, that will change our letting. At the top here, this will change the hue of the color the text is using. This dial will adjust the saturation of the color of the text. And the bottom dial will adjust our kerning. Swiping up once more takes us back to the first page of the dials. Now with the shuttle wheel, our familiar layer controls swipe and we have access to our zoom controls here. Swipe once more and we have access to those same text functions that we just saw. A little more responsive on the shuttle wheel. And we'll go back to our main. Next workspace we're going to look at is our filter. This will apply filters to the currently selected layer. Include a box blur, twirl, sphere eyes, etc. Now three pages of filters here. Second page of standard filters. And the third page identified in the pink color are smart filters. So if you have a smart layer, you can apply smart filters there. One more swipe to our main page. Familiar layer functions here. And the shuttle wheel in this workspace will allow us to jump to the particular touch pages just at the touch of a button. Back to main, we have a style workspace. These will, of course, apply a style to our currently selected layer. So we want to drop shadow, it opens up the dialog box. So you can explore these as you choose. Back to main, go to our color workspace and this is a series of commands that will load a particular color into either the foreground or the background color chip. So we want a magenta color in our background, or you want purple or yellow, etc. Swiping gives us access to the foreground color. We can make the foreground color green, blue, etc. And once you've selected that, you can make further controls of that color by adjusting the dials. So the dials on the left-hand side adjust the hue of the background, the lightness of the background, and the saturation of the background color. And on the right-hand side are the foreground controls. So if we want to change the tint of that green that we've got in the foreground, we can adjust this. Same thing with the lightness, increase, decrease lightness, and the saturation. We can draw the saturation right out. Now the shuttle wheel here acts like a color wheel controller. So if you click on it and move your finger around, you can see our color changing. We can increase saturation, move it away, away from saturation and away from lightness, etc. So if I was to go to the color palette here and uh, showing my hue cube, we can see that this is the same sort of action that we're getting. So by moving the color around, if I move up and over to the top right, we're getting a full saturation and full luminance. Pulling it down and away, we're getting less saturation and less luminance. Back to the main page. The next workspace we've got is our blend mode workspace. Now this is dedicated, of course, just to blend modes, so we can jump to a specific blend mode just at the press of a button with our currently selected layer. So if we want to go straight to linear burn, that jumps us straight there. In addition, the shuttle wheel on this workspace will cycle through all the different blend modes. Go back to the main, and we have a window workspace. Now this will open up a few windows for us, such as the color palette. If it wasn't open, it'll open it. The effects palette, the history palette, that sort of thing. Back to the main page, and we have a select workspace. So this allows us to make some modifications based on selections. So if you have a selection, we'll quickly do a selection here, and we want to modify it, we modify the feather, we can contract, etc. And you can explore those. 
So back to the main page. Those are the main functions of the core part of Photoshop. However, there's a whole other section that is available to us here. And that's the camera raw section. Now how we access the camera raw section is we simply select a layer and we apply a, a filter, camera raw filter. Once we do that, the loop deck is going to recognize it and immediately jump to our camera raw workspace that Sideshow FX has built. Now there are three main pages on the camera raw workspace for the touchpad. So if we can hop to tools and this gives us access to some of the tools available in camera raw and the view gives us a few view shortcuts that we can use. But the main part of this are these eight workspaces that we've built. Now you'll find that when you click to each one of these workspaces, the touchpad stays the same, but the rotation adjustments give us a lot of different options. And we're gonna go over each one of these. So let's start off with the basic. And you will have noticed that when we click through each of these different workspaces, it will open up that panel in Camera Raw and is ready for us to make adjustments. So we clicked on Basic. Basic panel opens up for us in Camera Raw. And now adjusting these controls here, let's start at the top left, which is our temperature. We can see we can adjust our temperature. And then we can adjust our tint and our exposure. On the top right here, we can adjust our contrast, our highlights, and our shadows. Now we have three pages of, of dial strips here. So scrolling up, we can go to our second page and we have controls over our whites, our blacks, our texture, the clarity, dehaze, and vibrant. So basically it's laid out the same way it's laid out in the interface itself. Swiping up once more gives us access to saturation. And we've also put the t some of the tone functions here. So if I start making a rotation on any one of these four tone controls, our curve dialog is going to open up for us. So now we can see we're adjusting highlights on the tone curve, darks, lights, and shadows and swiping once more takes us back to the first page of the dial strip. Now on the shuttle wheel, we have a few different commands here. We can zoom our image in and out. And I, m I must say that it's not uh, very responsive. Hopefully Loop Deck or Photoshop can improve on that. We can fit the image to full screen. Clicking it again takes us back out. And that's the basic workspace. Let's now select our curve workspace. Same tone functions that we had available in the basic also work here, but they're also now up here on our shuttle wheel. So we can control the different parameters using our shuttle wheel. Now moving over to detail, you see that our detail pane opens up in camera raw. Now if I try and make an adjustment here with the with the top left, which is our sharpening, you'll see that there is no response. This may be a bug or a quirk with how Loop Deck communicates with the interface. What you need to do in order to get this active, now this happens with, with the detail section as well as it happens with the optics uh, or, the, or the lens correction section. What you need to do is go to the interface and you need to twirl down each of the disclosure triangles. Now when I adjust the sharpening, you see it then becomes live and other tools then become available to us. The next one down is our radius control, then we have detail, and we have our masking. And of course on the shuttle wheel we have the same level of control here with our sharpening, masking, detail, and our radius. Now let's move over to our HSL workspace. And of course our color mixer opens up on the camera raw software. So the first dial strip page that we've got here, we have control over some hue functions. So we've got our red hue, orange, yellow, green, aqua, and blues. 
And if we swipe up once, we can access the hue of the purple and the magenta. Swiping once more gets us to the saturation section. Now when I move the saturation dials, you'll see that the interface will move from hue to saturation, allowing us to access these different controls. Swiping up once more gives us the purple and magenta saturation. Swipe again, we get to the luminance section. Green luminance, blue luminance, etc. Swipe once more and we have purple and magenta luminance. Swipe one last time, we go back to the hue section. Shuttle wheel gives us the same sort of commands, adjusting our hues. Swipe to get the additional four colors in the hue section. Swipe again for saturation. Second bank of saturation and then luminance, luminance, and then one more. We're back to hue. Now let's jump over to lens correction, also known as optics and camera raw. Just as in uh, we did demonstrated with the detail section, you can see that I've got a distortion uh, controller here at the top left. If I start moving it, you see there there is no action here. But if I then turn down both disclosure triangles that exist under the optics section and then access my distortion, I now can get a distortion command. Same thing with vignetting and our midpoint of vignette. And on this side we have defringe purple and defringe green. Once again the shuttle wheel does the same thing, distortion, our defringe green, defringe purple. And then swiping gives us control on the vignette. The vignette amount and our midpoint. Go into our effects workspace. The effects dialog opens up and we can control the amount of grain which then opens up the other dialogs for us. We can now control size and roughness. Same thing with our vignette controls. We can adjust vignetting then the other controls open up including our roundness and our feather. Shuttle wheel does the same thing. Here's our grain roughness, grain roughness, grain size, and the grain amount. Swiping gives us access to the vignette functions. Now let's hop over to the camera calibration section. You see it opens up in our interface, and we have control over our hue of our red, green, blue primaries and our saturation of our red, green, blue. And lastly, we go into our presets workspace. This just opens up the presets dialog in Camera Raw, giving us access to the presets that have been built in. So that's it, that's it in a nutshell. That's the whole navigation of what Sideshow FX has built into this Pro Pack for you. Now most users like to set things up the way they like to work and modify it to their own workflow. It's impossible to create a profile that works for everybody. So in this next section, I'm gonna demonstrate how you can get in and move things around and create your own customized workspaces. First of all, with the Pro Pack that we've got here as it is, we've tried to lay it out in a logical manner but like I said before, everybody likes to work in a different way and most people will want to customize this. So let's say we want to modify our tools uh, workspace. We can open that workspace up. And on our first page of tools, let's say we uh, want to put a few, we want to reorganize a few things. So I want to put my horizontal type at the top here and my magnetic lasso up there. It's just as easy as uh, dragging and dropping onto the new location and they swap positions. I'll put that back just for now. But what if I want an action from another page and put it onto this page? Well, it's as simple as navigating to the page where you have the action that you want, such as eyedropper, click on the menu for that action, say copy, go back to the page you want to put it, and then if I want to place it in this slot, for example, I can hit the menu and I would say paste. 
I'm not going to replace it at the moment, but that's how you can move it. And once you move it, you then have it in two places, so you'd want to change this one. It's not going to swap it out with that one. Now let's go back to our main page. Now, as mentioned before, we have 593 fully mapped actions that are pre-built under our custom menu here. And you can see all of those with the label mapped. So anything under the folder that says mapped has a shortcut applied to it and that shortcut matches the shortcut in the shortcut file you will have installed during the installation process. So let's say for example I want to create my own workspace and put in some new actions in there that don't appear in the profile as it exists. Well I can go up to main workspace and scroll to the bottom and select create new and it asks me where I want to put this workspace and there's two different areas one is in the main area and one is in camera raw so this workspace will appear only in either the main Photoshop mode or in the camera raw mode so let's just put it in main for now we'll give it a name we're gonna call it file and we'll say OK now it creates that new space for us and you can see it's put it under our navigation pane and it has given it a default icon. Now we can change this icon by clicking on it and choose an image from our desktop and we can create one here. We can drag and drop a, if we've already created it, we can drag and drop onto this location and that will change this icon. We'll leave it at the default for now and you can see it automatically puts a placeholder of a clock in here. So let's go back to our custom actions because we're going to drag and drop some pre-made actions. I'll close this dialog. We're going to drag and drop some pre-made actions from Sideshow FX's pack. So let's scroll down to the file section here and you see under file mapped we want to take a fully mapped action and we'll start populating this touch page. So we can go export as and I'm going to replace that clock just by dropping it straight onto there and you can see it replaces it, it uh, has the icon attached to it and if we click on export as you can see it's got the shortcut already applied to it. Now I've created this this workspace but I have no way currently on my device to 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 get to it. So if I if I go to Photoshop for example and on my device I have my main page here but I don't have any way to access that particular workspace I just created so I have to create a shortcut to it. So back on Loop Tech We'll go to our main and I can go to navigation, go to workspaces and I can click on, these are always adjusted, these are always listed in alphabetical order. So this is file, the one we just created. I can click this and drop it straight onto an empty key and you can see it creates that default icon for us and it shows up on our device and click on file it opens up that workspace for me and our newly created key is there so I click on this key and my export as dialog will open up now to get back to the main page it's still the number one that we've mapped gets us to the back to the main page now, let's say we want to expand on this let's go back to the workspace the file workspace we just created and we want to go back to custom Go down to file mapped and we'll add a few more in say images to device layers to files and save as so we have those four items now in our workspace but let's say there's a few items that are missing that we want to include go down to the file unmapped now all of these actions have been installed by sideshow effects the only difference is as as mentioned earlier is they don't have a shortcut applied to them. So if I go, let's say I want to put artboards to files in here, and I go to Photoshop, and let's just create an artboard. I go to my file workspace, you can see the newly created shortcuts are there for us, and I hit artboard to files, nothing happens because there hasn't been a shortcut assigned to it. When we go and we take a look at artboards to files here, you can see that there's just a space in the shortcut command sitting there as a placeholder. We'll need to apply our own unique shortcut to this in order for this to work. So let's create one, say, Control Option Command Shift, 
and the number pad multiply sign. I save that. Go back to Photoshop. This still won't do anything when I go to my file workspace and hit artboard to file because the shortcut hasn't been written in my Photoshop shortcut commands. So let's go to edit, keyboard shortcuts, and we'll go down to file and we'll find artboard to files here. Here it is here, and you see that it's blank, doesn't have a shortcut applied to it. So let's click on this and we're going to apply the exact same shortcut we just applied in loop deck. And I happen to know that this shortcut currently doesn't exist in this shortcut file, therefore, and so I don't get a, a warning if I had uh, put in a shortcut, let's say, let's just change this to Command-S, which is of course for save, it's going to give me a warning. So we can't use that one unless I was to overwrite it, which we're not going to do. So we'll put in the shortcut we did apply, and we say accept. OK out of that. Now when we go to our device and hit Artboards to Files, our dialog shows up. So that's how you can quickly populate your own workspace. So between mapped and unmapped, there's over 1,200 programmed commands ready for you to go. And you can mix and match as you like. They all have icons attached. And if they're under mapped, they're going to have a shortcut attached. So that's modifying the touchscreen. How do we modify the dial pages? Much in the same way. So to access the editor of the dial page, let's say we want to create some some dial commands here for our new workspace. We click on any one of the dials here and it opens up our dialog. Now let's say for some silly reason I want to put brightness cube into a rotation command. Well, it's not going to work because it's not a rotation command as indicated by the icon here. It's a press action. However, you can see that each of the dials has a press action slot. So by pressing on a dial, we can also add in a command. So if I want to put brightness cube on the add action, so now that when I go to my Photoshop and I go to my file workspace, you can see the brightness cube is indicated there. If I press on this dial, that will change my color to brightness cube. The rotation doesn't do anything because there's no rotation command applied to it. Now if we go back to loop deck, I want to apply a rotation action to this. Now we can click on rotate and this will filter the side show because we're still in the custom here and we and we selected rotate. This will list all of the rotation adjustments that Sideshow FX has created. So if I go under image adjustments and let's just take brightness and put it on that slot of the rotation, you can see that it replaces the press action because this takes precedent. Now when we go to Photoshop, I'll first need to undo the artboard here, and then we can adjust the brightness of our image. You can see, however, that it has replaced the press action. So we can go back and apply a press action here. Go down to Color Panel, take the Brightness Cube, and apply it. It seems to be a bit of a quirk that when you put a rotation in that it overrides that. That may be because there are certain rotation commands that when you drag them over into this slot, it will automatically populate a reset of that command. Now, how do we work it with the shuttle wheel? So we click on the shuttle wheel, and if we want to add a new shuttle wheel page, we click on the menu item below here, add new page. And then we have a variety of options of the shuttle wheel layouts that we have available to us. I'll just make a very simple two action shuttle wheel, say OK. And now we have two sections, top and bottom, that we can apply rotation adjustments to. So let's say we want to put a brightness adjustment there. You then see it gets populated in the top half for brightness. And let's scroll down to contrast on the bottom part. Now close that out, go over to Photoshop. Now when we go to our file workspace, you can see the clock is still there. We swipe over to the newly created wheel page. We now have control over brightness. Click the bottom to have control over contrast. Now if we don't want that clock there, very easy to get rid of it. 
go back to loop deck, click on the wheel, click on the ellipse. We can highlight the clock and say delete. It'll allow you to do that as long as there is more than one item. See, there's only one item, there's only one shuttle wheel page now. So if I click on this and want to delete this as well, it won't let me. It has, there has to be at least one page here. So now when we go back to our device, file workspace, this will now appear on the first page. And it's the only page. If we created one more page here, add a new page, make it one and two as well. And we'll just throw hue and lightness and say OK. Now in our file workspace, we can swipe to that new page back and forth. So when we come to the file workspace, this is the page that we will see. But what if we want this page to be the first one we see when we come to the file work page? Well, we can reorder them. Click on the shuttle wheel, click on the ellipse. We can click and drag and just reorder, and it renames them. So that's how to apply rotation adjustments. In our, and in our Sideshow Effects rotation adjustment section, which, uh, which is what you see when you click on this, all of these are rotation adjustments. These are all fully mapped. There are no unmapped ones. So everything you see in here is fully mapped. You don't have to do any shortcut commands for, for that. But keep in mind, with the press actions, you do have mapped and unmapped, and the unmapped require you to apply your own shortcut. However, all the icons are attached to each one of these items. So one further note I'd like to add about customization. In our Photoshop Pro Pack, we've also included all the icons associated with all of the actions. And they're also offered in three additional sets. Now the set that we've used for the profile is our uh, label set. It's a, it's a two-tone, uh, white with uh, some blue accents. But there is also an unlabeled version of this where we have all the same icons without the title attached. And we have a, another set that is that has a color background. And there are different colors for different segments that we've used in both an unlabeled and a labeled version. So you may decide that the two-tone doesn't suit your taste and you want to go for a different color scheme or you just want to have unlabeled versions, just have the icons only. So I'll quickly show you how to how you can do that. Let's just create a new workspace here. Go to the bottom, create new. It's going to be a main workspace, and we'll call this crop. It gives us the blank workspace here. And let's switch back over to our custom actions. And if we scroll down to toolbar and crop, so let's say we're, we're going to just make a new workspace with a few of these. Simple as that. Now you notice that these are unmapped versions, so the ones located in this particular set don't have a shortcut attached to them. You'll have to create your own shortcut and of course make the same shortcut in Photoshop for these to function properly. So that's well and good. But let's say you don't like the style of this, you just want the icons on their own. Well, go over to your Photoshop Pro Pack into the Icons folder and click on Unlabeled. And if you want to quickly locate where these are, you can use your operating system search function and we'll look for, say, Diagonal in our Unlabeled folder. And here it pops up here. And we can just click down here on the Mac system to just open up that entire folder and we have all of them in here. So we have the diagonal version, unlabeled version of this diagonal icon. So we click on the name of the action and we have the parameters down here at the bottom. Click on the icon and then we can just drag and drop onto this icon tray to replace it. Say save. The interface will update and we'll see it updates here. And you can do this the same for the, for the rest of them as well. Click on golden ratio, locate the golden ratio in our unlabeled folder. 
and just swap it out. Software updates, and now we have an unlabeled version of that. And of course, you can do the same thing for the different icon sets that we've got here. Let's say we want to try the color version of the unlabeled. We can go down to toolbar, crop tools, and let's click on the golden ratio again, and now we can drop on our color background version. And do the same thing for diagonal. Once you get into a rhythm, this can go actually quite quickly. And now you have the color icons available on your device. So that's it, that's the Pro Pack. Hopefully you'll find it really helps with your workflow and you can modify it to suit your own needs. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.